uh, historical churches, um, the Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Reverend Aubrey Watson. Say like I say on Sunday, let the church say amen. 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 What an historic day, thanking God for blessing us to be here on this day, thanking God for all his grace, all his mercy, and all his peace. Let us bow our heads. Gracious God, we come giving you thanks and giving you all the glory for Pontchartrain Park, God, for all the residents, all the political leaders and all the officials, the Pontilly, the Pontchartrain Park Neighborhood Association, God, thanking you, God, for Wendell Pierce, WBOK, our former mayor, Mark Morales, who's here with us today, God, and we thank you for Councilman Green and all the officials and all the residents and neighbors of Pontchartrain Park. We pray that you continue to let this be one of the most historic and blessed African-American and mixed neighborhoods at this time. Thanking you, God, because you are a blessing, God. We pray that you continue to be with the educational institutions in this community, be with all the churches in this community and all the organizations. But most of all, God, we also give you thanks, God, as we remember Knox, God, Coach Knox, who trained and nurtured so many young people at this play playground, God. We know you're an awesome and a mighty God. We pray you be with his family as they also remember him on this day. And God, we just pray that you continue to bless our city. And we pray, God, we know it's Essence Festival time, that it is a successful and safe festival for all who have come to enjoy the hospitality of New Orleans. All the good food and all the good music. But again, God, we thank you for Puncher Train Park Neighborhood Association who made this day possible. Thanking God for all those years as we go back to 1955 when they laid the foundation for the first home. So God, we thank you that we made it through Katrina, we made it through Ida, and we know God through your loving arms and blessings and protection. We will always make it and survive when we count on you, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to guide us and bless us and keep us all. Thanks to God, say amen. 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 Do, uh, we're going to rise for the Black National Anthem, lift every voice. And it's in your program, so if you would sing along with me, I would appreciate it. Lift every voice and sing till earth and Train Park. It was our safe haven. We lived in our own village as one big 
family, looking out for one another. We respected each other. We played together. If you ran out of sugar, you know you could go next door and ask for a cup of sugar. Or, or if you needed a ride to the highway, you know you could hitchhike a ride. <laughs> Standing on the corner, how about that? <laughs> we trusted each other to have each other's back. Pontchartrain Park was a great place to grow up. Many fond memories. There were so many kids. That's because most families consisted of a minimum of five and up to like 22, something like that. <laughs> I, I don't know how many more say <laughs> with the Sanders, they had a bunch and the Polo, you know. <laughs> oh, I had the most for 18, she said 15. All right. <laughs> I can remember playing cool can, running track on a park, playing softball, we all went to college, okay, we all might not have, a few might have went to St. Gabriel, okay? But most of us went to Cog Hill Elementary School. Yeah. With great teachers, like Miss Pierce, yeah. Miss Jones, yeah. Miss Butler, yeah. Miss Terry, yeah. and so on and so on. But the most significant thing about them is what? They live in Pontchartrain Park. Wouldn't that be great if we had that today where we all in the name? That's, that was wonderful. Um, but also, uh, Pontchartrain Park had a very positive, lasting impact on how we live in society today. We have always been proud to say, I'm from Nepal. Oh, where you from? Girl, I'm from Nepal. Everybody knew what that meant too, right? <laughs> Um, so as I stand before you today, I still say I'm from Nepal. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do with this is we are going to have some uh, fond memories. We're going to uh, acknowledge our, our pioneers, our, our residents. And I, if I give you a shout out, then I give you a shout out. Y'all know we had uh, a thousand homes and I just... Every now and then I might spurt out a family name. Y'all can say, woo, woo, whatever, okay? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start out. I'm going to ask. Um, I'm first going to um, recognize and acknowledge our guests. Um, I would like to acknowledge, uh, first of all, uh, Preservation uh, Resource Center. They were with us hand in hand, walked us through it. They worked hand in hand with our awesome, our awesome historic committee. And I would like the historic committee to, if you can come forward, I was supposed to have um, special seating, but as you can see, we are overbooked. But the, Patrick Clementine, Elder Delvarez Perkins, Ms. Gaynell Lawrence, and where's Willetta Ferdinand, who is our co-chair, and she wrote a, a beautiful uh, book. And our historic committee chair, Miss Carrie Mingo Douglas. And we wanted her to be here, but uh, she had death in her family, so keep her in your prayers. But I also want to acknowledge our uh, special guests who are here. Of course, our um, Urban League our National Urban League President, former mayor, and also a former Puncher Train Park resident is here, Mark Morial. In addition, his mother is here, Miss Sybil Morial. We have our Senator uh, Bowie, Senator Joe Bowie is here. Our council member Eugene Green is here. Our state representative, uh, 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 our state rep Matthew Willard is here. In addition, this awesome event is sponsored. Our sponsors are here. We have Ms. Diana Holmes with Chase Bank. Uh, we also have the Greater New Orleans Foundation here. Is Andy here? All right. All right. And is Danielle here um, with the uh, Preservation Resource? 
Hey, 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 yeah. All right, all right. And of course, Dilla University, y'all see all these copies in your hand. They always do wonderful in kind for us. And of course, Southern University, they're going to come before later on to uh, speak. So we're going to go ahead on with our our uh, program. And wait, wait a minute. Well, well let me tell y'all this. Let me tell y'all this. Can I say this? Y'all know this is the most awesome person ever. He did not forget about us. He went high, reached to the sky, and he came back to grab and help us get to where we need to be. So I'm really proud of the person I'm about to introduce to come give us some reflections. Y'all know that when we first started out after Hurricane Katrina, well, I'll say his name. Y'all know I'm talking about Wendell. <laughs> but you all know, right after Hurricane Katrina, Wendell called a meeting with all the residents and said, we taking our community back. And he's been fighting for us, holding hands with us, ever since and I have much respect for him. So I want Wendell to come and give some reflections and say whatever he want to say because he is also our board president. Oh, the board, I forgot. The board members, Leopold Keller, Michael Carey, Sherry Baker Gibson, Herbie Oubre, Cheryl Johnson, and of course, Amoy, myself. And this is our board member, Wendell Pierce, is coming to give a few words. Come on, I would like the board to come up here. The board, come up. We have all of these meetings on Zoom. We're tired of Zoom. We never get to see each other in person. Come on, Mike, Leopold, Sherry. Say your Gretchen. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Wendell Pierce. I'm an actor. Uh, I am the proud owner, one of four proud owners of Equity Media, and we own WBOK. 12.30 a.m., what New Orleans is talking about. And WBOK is a proud sponsor of this event because this is a sacred event. I'm so happy that we started with the invocation from Reverend Watson because we are on sacred ground, hallowed ground. There was blood in the fields because so many black folks couldn't even gather like this. This would have been illegal in segregated New Orleans because you couldn't gather in a green space in New Orleans as black folks except one day out of the week, Negro Day, and it wasn't this day, Thursday. And it was because of our uh, ancestors and warriors and those civil rights leaders that we fought an advocacy to get access just to green space, led by the great A.P. Turo. Give him a hand. And those warriors, those pioneers made sure that our city government paid some attention to us, and they capitulated. They didn't go all the way, but they capitulated, and they came up with this compromise, an ugly compromise of separate but equal. Separate but equal. And they took something ugly, and they made it beautiful a black Mayberry, an incubator of talent, the first place of black excellence, doctors and ditch diggers, lawyers and laborers and teachers and mothers and fathers and a plethora of children. And we made this place special. Say its name, Punch a Train Park. And we are here today because of those pioneers and they're sitting in front right here. Yeah. Speak to the men and women right. who have to come from the front and dodge batteries and bricks and guns pointed at them. There was violence. There was blood on that ballot box as well as we fought to make sure that we got access to not only green space, but the hallowed 200 acres that we have here in a thousand homes. They used to bring tours around here, the first Negro subdivision in America, right? Look, the Negro female is hanging up clothes. And look, the Negro, oh, that Negro's pointing a gun. <laughs> no, uh, they actually had uh, men would come and knock on the doors in the middle of the day and punch the housewives of Punch and Train Park. So there was violence in that ugly time of segregation, and we made this Black, Mary, Black Mayberry come alive. Then in 2005, it was being destroyed, 
and we realized that we had to put out a clarion call to all those children that grew up in that neighborhood, this neighborhood. The Moses generation handed us, the Joshua generation, a great place, and we knew it couldn't go down. So we constituted our own redevelopment and built 40 homes, brick by brick, block by block, until we rebuilt Punch a Train Park. And we're here today to celebrate that history. And now when we unveil this marker, think of all the ancestors, all the men and women who have died and gone on. We are the dreams of those who came before to say, make sure that we hold on to this great and special neighborhood, and we will. We're going to go into the future, and I'm allowed by this board to announce today that we will, starting today, start a capital campaign to acquire the Cog Hill site to build the Punch and Train Park Aquatic Fitness and Computer Center. I call on all of our sponsors and stakeholders, Mr. Coughlin at Greater New Orleans Foundation, Ms. Holmes at Chase, join us, PRC, as we rebuild this neighborhood better for the future. And we too will be a community lighthouse, a place of refuge, right? So we want to thank them. And I learned one thing, from this brother, Mark Morial, right? Yes, he was mayor. Yes, he is the national president of the Urban League. But when he lived in Punch and Trade Park, he kicked the longest field goal in New Orleans <laughs> recreational department history. The longest one. He was our Tom Dempsey. <laughs> I, I think it was like 90 yards or something like that. Yeah. It's become 90 yards over the years. But, but in my business, we say one thing. There's a certain immortality to theater. And I think of Punch and Train Park. There's a certain immortality to Punch and Train Park because it's not given because of monuments or plaques or anything like that, but the certainty that we knew that we gave a place of love and growth for the children of our community to grow up and be proud members of New Orleans and productive citizens. We've gone around the world. And with that, our pioneers can rest easy in these golden years and know that they have joined the ages and made America the country that we say it can be. The other thing I learned from Mark Morial, the five Bs. Be brief, brother, be brief. And with that, thank you. So I'm kind of glad he said be brief because we do have a long program, but we have to acknowledge the people that we will be calling up to just say a little piece of uh, memory or, or history. So I'm going to be calling up um, our some memories first and then I'll have a few of our pioneers to come up and just say something briefly about what they remember. So I'm first going to call up. Mr. Don Miller, he always have a whole lot to tell me. I might to sum it up, you know, you can't stand up on two hours. Yeah, <laughs> All right. <laughs> and you can sing. Yeah, he might close us out with a number today. All right, Oh, I can hand it to you. I'll bring, it, I'll bring the microphone to you. Yeah, yeah. Get it. Not right by the speaker, though. Not by the speaker. It's going to be feedback. I don't know how to do this. Hot. Do you know how to do this? This is going to be what brief, people. Are you trying to, trying to record? Uh, yeah. It's recording right now. Oh, okay. Uh, well, first of all, it, it is but definitely I'm, I'm an well, honor you should have given it to me. that my family is some of the cornerstone people that entered into this park back in 1956. I was approximately eight or nine years old. I'm 75 years old now. This park, in the peak of segregation, basically had only two ways to get in here. It was through Haynes Boulevard, where you had to either come from Leon C. Simon to Diamond to Haynes to get on Congress, or you had to go through Sheffmonter Highway to uh, France Road to Haynes. They had a ditch all the way across that we could not cross. 
They had the train tracks bordering the other half. When I moved out here, they only had homes up to Frankfurt Street. And I just want to acknowledge some of the families that were out here when I first came out here. Y'all forgive me if I don't know, uh, call it everyone. <laughs> they had the Bakers, the Florence, the McLeods, the Darrensburg, the Mayos, the Blooms, the, <laughs> the Smiths, the Bechets, the Thomas, the Jacksons, the Drummonds, the Lewis, the LeBlancs, the Monroes, and the Joneses. And of course, I can probably go all the way down because I used to be a paper boy. <laughs> and I went, I went all the way to um, Mexico, the Boer, and Congress. It, <laughs> well, yeah, 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 they had the greens. <laughs> like I say, <laughs> they brought so many people I haven't seen in years. <laughs> but the fact is, is that over the years, I have watched this edifice develop. Bethany Church is probably the first church that was in Pontchartrain Paul. <laughs> Southern University came up. And then the uh, Lutheran Church came up. Now there's another Baptist church behind Suno, and I really didn't know much about it until later years. <laughs> but this is a place that black folks have never had in their lives. A golf course to play, uh, to play golf on. We finally got schools, elementary school. And when I first came out here, Blacks had no school within a 10 or 15 mile radius to go to. We had to be, if you're in elementary school, we had to be bused all the way to uh, Menard Nelson. Older kids, if they were older, they got to school uptown or something like that. But the fact is, is that we made it. And we will continue to make it. And thank you very much. And by the way, he mentioned that Baptist Church is Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church. And the reason why it's not a part of Puncher Train Park history, that church was here when we got here, like in the 1900s, according to the records. And it is considered Seabrooks. But y'all remember what we used to call it? Mad Man. Mad Man. <laughs> All right. Just a little piece of history. All right. All right. So I'm going to ask um, our next guest. I ask this guest because a lot of you are in your homes because of this person. We Remember, y'all, we got a lot. But I want him to come say something briefly. Uh, Mr. Rodney Greenup. This family. Sixty-seven years ago, I couldn't do this. I, I didn't have to do this rather. And I don't remember it being as hot as it is today. When we were playing on the golf course, playing football, or we were running around this, this golf course, two and a half miles, by the way. But it was always fun. It was always a family atmosphere out here. And I'm so happy to see everyone who's still supporting Punch and Train Park. Even us old guys, and uh, I know there are a few of us that are, that are still hanging around, and uh, we hope that Punch and Train Park will continue to be as strong as it has been. Good luck to everybody. God bless you. All right, and then also, what, I'm, what we're doing is we're going through our history. So I invited uh, Suno here. We have uh, uh, Dr. Clyde Robinson here. He's going to come and brief. He did a, I'll let him tell y'all what he did. But also we have our commander in chief, uh, Bruce Adams, is here. So where are you, brother Clyde? Good evening, everyone. This is uh, certainly a very special occasion. As Sister Gresham stated, I'm Clyde Robinson. 
Uh, Mrs. Oubre, how are you? Mrs. Henry? I grew up on Prentice Avenue. Uh, that Prentice, not this Prentice. And uh, I'd like to first salute all of the elders, all of the pioneers. The people who dared live the American dream when we were told we weren't good enough to live the American dream. Now this was a generation of people who saw war, depression, segregation that was bone chilling and bone breaking. And what they did, they left a legacy with the generations that followed. I'm one of them. This, as I often say, was a can-do neighborhood. In a city and in a country in the world that told you you couldn't do anything and wouldn't allow you to do much of anything. Here, we were told and we were shown that you could do anything you wanted to do. And so I applaud and I thank all of the elders who are sitting amongst us and all of the people who have come to support them because they have supported and continue to support us. Pontchartrain Park is a special and uh, a place in my life. For me, it was one of the most important places in the world then it is one of the most important places in the world now because without Ponch Train Park I would certainly not be here doing what I do. I might be alive, but I certainly wouldn't be the person that I am. So again, I thank all of you elders for doing for me what you were able to do because, and I know this might sound cliche, Someone said it earlier. This was truly a village. Yeah. And when we were out on the park, some of us might have been trying to do dirt. <laughs> you couldn't do much. Because Mrs. Morial was there. <laughs> Mr. Poire was there. <laughs> Miss Henry was always there. <laughs> and my parents were a phone call away, if not a few feet away so again thank you very much for helping me punch crank park forever well, we stand proud right i'm going to ask our friend on the historic committee we kind of skipped the um i'm sorry about that the uh, agenda but he has a um, brief a uh, piece of history he would like to give us some facts. Mr. Patrick Clementine, he's a part of the historic committee and he has some facts for us. Good evening everyone. I'm Patrick Clementine, longtime resident of Pontchartrain Park and a member of the historic committee that moved to have Pontchartrain Park added to the National Register for Historic Places. I have to say it was an uphill battle at times, but we had a committee that was determined, a committee that would not yield. We had a co-captain and a captain that kept us steadfast and unmovable toward our goals. And I'd like to acknowledge them once again because one of them wasn't here earlier when our names were called. I'd like to acknowledge Miss Willetta Ferdinand. Miss Willetta is a great communicator. She made sure that we were where we should be and we were ready for the next move. Thank you, Miss Willetta. 
And of course, we had Miss Carrie Mingo Douglas. She was the spearhead of the organization and the group. And without her, we just wouldn't have done it. Let's give Miss Carrie a time. Now, I was asked to go over some historic facts that's floating around. You should see them. And if you have them, you'll see that there are far too many for me to stand and read to you. <laughs> and I'm trying to exercise brevity here. So what I would like you to do is to take that list home and peruse and read at your convenience and to think, reminisce where you were in all of this. Where you were because we all played a part in the development of what you see which is Pontchartrain Park. Keep in mind when you're reading that Pontchartrain Park was born out of the Jim Crow era, a time that some would think of as being worse than slavery. Yet we achieved. Yet we rose to what we see today, but our work is not done. We are a model of excellence for all communities to see. And let's keep on moving up that length, that to where we should be in society. Thank you very much. It really got a lot of knowledge and a, a lot of things that they found out during their research. Um, I'm going to go ahead on and ask uh, Sherry Baker to come and then we'll move on with our pioneers. I'm Sherry Baker. I am the secretary of the Puncher Train Park Neighborhood Association. And I just want to tell y'all, we're talking about the pioneers today. I just want to let you know what a pioneer is. A pioneer is a person who is among the first to explore or settle a new country or area. A person who begins or helps develop something new and prepares the way for others to follow. They begin something new or take part in the early development of something. They are someone who sees potential. They're an innovator who is willing to try new things. One who pushes boundaries to advance a cause or idea or break a record. These people, in order for them to do those things, they must possess boldness, courage. They must have a vision. They must be dedicated and persistent. Also, be creative. Thank you, Miss Bradford. More. What a treat it is to see all of my old neighbors. It's wonderful. I want to tell you about what Puncher Train Park has meant to my family. When my husband was discharged from the Army, we came here, lived with my mother for a few months, and were fortunate enough to rent a house this couple had bought the house, but I believe he got a job in another city. He did not want to let this house go. He, he eventually wanted to come back. So he rented it to us. It was way on the old side of the park. New York Circle and DeBoer Drive. Um, we, I guess it was 1956 when we moved there. And I was already convinced I wanted to be in this neighborhood. Now, when we lived in Baltimore, when Dutch was in uh, the Army, we were near New York and we visited New York. And I remember Levittown. Levittown was a big, huge development 
available for the veterans of World War II. Just as this was for the veterans, they got um, um, a loan from the government uh, to purchase the houses. But I knew about Levittown and I thought, mm -hmm, that's good. It's a whole new development, new houses, uh, young uh, people who have children. So when we came here and were fortunate enough to live on New York Circle, I was convinced this is where I wanted to raise my family. So it didn't, David Greenough did not have to do a, a, a big speech to me. <laughs> I was already convinced. And so we bought the house right down the street, like five houses down on Press Drive. And that's where Julie, Mark, Jacques, and Cherie spent their childhood. Monique, unfortunately, we had to move on because we outgrew the house. <laughs> but when uh, Wendell Pierce made reference to Mark kicking that ball when he played with the New Orleans, what was that team called? Fudge of Trade Park Saints, yes. <laughs> he then was the place kicker for Jesuit High School. And he would come home from school, he had his kicking boot across the street over in the park and practice kicking before he came back home for dinner. That's where he improved his skill. Now, he will tell you what he thinks about growing up in Punch Train Park. But I'm also reminded that everyone looked out for everyone else's child, and we were grateful for that. But sometimes the children weren't grateful, because the other mamas would call us before they got home. Say, I saw your child hanging out with a bunch of boys. Now, they weren't up to any mischief, but they wanted me to know. So they would hightail it home. <laughs> um, but the place is beautiful. Trees, new homes. Everyone kept up their homes. You would see the owners cutting the grass and weeding the gardens. Um, it was just a wonderful place. They all, all of my children who grew up here had good friends right on our block the same age. They loved it here. I think, I think the, the older ones, when we moved, kind of regretted it because we moved to a neighborhood where there weren't a, a, a lot of children. But Mark has said to me, Mama, in one block, we could make up a football team. That's how many children there were uh, in our block. But um, I loved it here. My children loved it here. It was beautiful and secure. You could go up front for all the stores that you wanted. There was Swagman, there was Maison Blanche, and uh, Sears, and many other smaller stores. So you didn't have to go far from home to get any, everything that you needed. Um, so I'm sure many of you who raise children in the park uh, can agree with what I'm talking about. But it was a wonderful opportunity for the returning uh, soldiers from World War II, and we did get that federal loan to buy our house. We lived on, on New York Circle, I think for three years, uh, and then we moved over here. And as I said, David did not have to do a hard sell to me. <laughs> we already knew we wanted to be here. So I'm happy to be here, and I'm just thrilled that this is a historic place now. Thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. As I said, listening to everybody, I was so full, but I'm so grateful that I had an opportunity to be a part of Punch and Train Park. It took a long time to decide what we wanted to do, but when we decided and came out to Punch and Train Park, my husband and I knew this is the place we wanted to be. 
the, the um, neighbors. We had a, at the time when we first moved, and which is, I have my, my uh, first bill of sales for a bunch of drink. The, uh, the closing cost was $465. Wow. And it included a whole year of insurance. Whoa. <laughs> wow. The other document here is showing where I live. The, the, the square the, and all. Uh, and that's what made Punchy Train unique too. Because each time it, they built something or got a, a group of houses together, they moved on to this. But they had only five designs that you could choose from. And that made it unique. We didn't have this up and down and wide and close and whatever, <laughs> but we had. And we learned to have a good track team among the parents because we would race out here every day to see whose house is going to be finished first. <laughs> so we brought, on Saturdays, we brought our lunch because we were, we were going to stay there longer than we usually stay. So we needed to have something to eat. So Miss Bradford and Miss Cooks and myself, we were the three families, and we were housed though between the tracks and press, the ditch and the uh, seminary place. That was our, our territory. And I was so anxious to move into Punta Train Park that we moved and I had no lights for two days. The electricity was off. Didn't have any furniture. So what we did was we split up the bedroom. We put, and we had a workroom where we put the ironing board on in the workroom, that was one room. We had our, our bed because we would, had been married just a, maybe 10 months because we came here. As I said, my first payment was October 1st. 1958. So, and we started working with Mr. Greener to maintain, to get our house on June 1st, 1958. I was successful in raising four wonderful children. I've got eight grandchildren, and now I've got four great-grandchildren. I have been in Pontchartrain Park for 64 years. It was, and my kids, my children, they didn't go to school. Well, Rhea and uh, Wayne and Justin went to Cockhill. In fact, Rhea and Wendell were king and queen at the May Day. You no, know, May Day. Well, you had to go out and swing, get the Maypole. And, 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 and they were. What kind of strange ritual that was. <laughs> well, we didn't want to go to McDonald's today. Oh, okay. So we went to the car kill day and, and performed. So, and I'm going to be stop talking because I could talk on about a bunch of trend for year to, till to next time, next year this time, because of all of the good things that happened to me, my husband, and my four children, and now my grandchildren. So enjoy yourselves. And it's so good seeing all of you here today. All right, Mr. Edgar Poirier. All right, and then we'll have our guest speaker, and then we'll have our uh, other guests to come. <laughs> All right, pioneers. Pioneers in the house. Project Train Park has just been a place that you can grow. And for a boy who chased a girl for 14 years and 21 days, found out 10 years later that he was the youngest stalker, <laughs> whose name is Pore, and my dad was working in the field, all day he's sweating 
and his boss said, here comes Paul Ray. That's where we got the name from. <laughs> well, to make this short and snappy, I had $246.43 when I met Glory, when I married Glory. And I promised her that I would never, ever disrespect her, but I couldn't promise her. I wouldn't embarrass her because I am still doing that. Well, I also told her that I'm going to have you in a brand new house in five years, and we're going to be debt free at 50. Now, for a cat who's got $246.43, who looks like me, that's a pretty big stretch. Well, after leaving Bethany Church, I went to Greenup because they were building 10 houses with central air conditioning. And they had this beautiful layout. And I saw that. And he said, you know what? We only have two left and we got bids on it. So I called Gloria and I said, I just saw our dream house. She said, you are a dreamer. You are really a dreamer. And I said, I asked him, how much did I have to put down? remember I'm poor and he said well we could take care of you if you can't handle it and I never heard of this he said we can get a second mortgage and I said second mortgage what is a second mortgage he said in case you don't have a big enough down payment well for a man who left a $52 a month house to move in a $40 a month house to save $144 for the year pretty tough to put that money down because for the FHA you know you had to make up a lot of money but they didn't count your wife's check because she could get pregnant so then I asked the guy well how much is the other way I could get it he said a conventional loan well when I told Gloria that I had to make a bid on this house now because they only had two left and they had central air conditioning she said I know you dreaming if you think I'm going to let you buy a house that I haven't seen, I say, but I understand if you don't like it, we can drop back. And I said, you know what? She said, dream and go get it. And I said, we moved in in four years, seven months, and nine months. And I said, we we're going to be debt free for 50. And we beat it by three years. And all I can say is, your name might be Paul, but in Pontchartrain Park, your vision is always there. And to see these beautiful faces here, and to know how you never had the bother about being late getting at home, because before they had Bell South and South Central Bell, they had that lady sitting there in front. And if you didn't pass there at the same time in the evening, your mother knew about it. And not only are we beautiful, but it gave us a vision to be loved. We just didn't know how good we had it back in those days. And it is wonderful that this occurred. You be blessed and be safe. Mr. Boren, thank you. From the Joe Thalman Golf Club, uh, we we preserving the legacy of Joe Thalman because he loved golf. He built this golf course here for black golfers to play golf because they had nowhere to play golf. All right, and uh, we continue his legacy. And if you wanna learn how to play golf or you're interested in playing golf, just come over to the clubhouse. And that's what brother that squirrel and we'll teach you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, nothing but love for Gretchen. Uh, you know, it is warm out here. And as Wendell said, I need to be brief and be seated. But when you stand here on a day like today, your emotions, memories, reminiscences, thoughts kind of consume you. Uh, this is a special day. 
my goodness, this is a special day. Uh, all the stories that have been told have walked me down memory lane. And I, Wendell and I always sort of joke when we see each other that uh, no matter where we go, no matter who we meet, no matter who we see, no matter what accolades and recognitions and occur, it all began here. It all started here. What is special, and I want to capture this moment this way, is this neighborhood was created in an effort to maintain segregation. But civil rights leaders and activists and others began to protest that housing wasn't available in Gentilly Woods, which preceded Punch a Train Park. The city fathers at that time, the planners said, we're going to build a neighborhood for them to keep them from wanting to live in our neighborhoods. What they didn't know is that they were going to unleash a force. They were going to unleash a force that today it is Train Park that is on the National Register of Historic Places. It's Punchetrain Park that has produced actors and lawyers and doctors and police officers and teachers and businessmen and businesswomen. It is Train Park that has produced greatness and has produced an incredible legacy. Out of disrespect, our elders, you all, built something that is special to us. Wendell and I always say, this is not the best neighborhood in New Orleans. It's not the best neighborhood in Louisiana. It's not the best neighborhood in the United States. And it's not the best neighborhood in the world. It's the best neighborhood in the universe. And I truly mean it. On today, mom, and to all the moms and grandmothers and grandfathers and the legacy of those who've gone, we just want to say thank you. You know, when you all, in those days, in the late 50s and the early 60s, before the Civil Rights Act was passed, had the audacity and the courage to become homeowners. The audacity and the courage to build a community and build a neighborhood. The audacity and the courage to raise us with old-fashioned tough love. That audacity and, the, and, and that courage is what this sign represents today. It doesn't just represent this physical place. It represents this idea, this concept, everything that this wonderful, powerful place represents. My hope is that there's going to be a new and next generation that will come in and buy these homes and continue the legacy of this neighborhood to raise families. Some who come back and retire here. We've got to preserve what Train Park has always represented into the future. So I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here. I wouldn't miss this for the world. I really want to thank Gretchen and the team. I came back. Uh, this was a few years back when, for the, they call it the Gentilly Fest, I call it the Punch Train Park reunion. <laughs> y'all got to, you know, it's Punch Train Park, y'all, right? <laughs> they come up with this Gentilly, that's all right. <laughs> but it's Punch Train Park. And uh, I had some folks from out of town 
And uh, they said, I said, I'm going to a neighborhood reunion. They said, a neighborhood reunion. And it got out there and it was supposed to have been 10,000 people. They said, this is a neighborhood reunion? <laughs> I said, this is a neighborhood reunion because it underscores how much we love what Punch Strain Park represents and all our friends and all of our family members and everyone. So I thank you. And I want to just express my gratitude because I would not be where I am. I reflect on this place every day. I reflect on what it represents. I love every minute of it. And we were living in a time in the post civil rights, right after 1964 and 65 when the country was changing. And I remember, I talk about it in the book. I have a whole chapter in my book about that ditch. That ditch we crossed through because we went over to St. Gabriel. I tell stories about getting chased every day. I get tell a story about how one day after school we went to Harris Park. And a white mother came and said, you all know you don't belong here. You need to go home and never come back to this playground again. And you know, we were in third, it's Henry's second, third, fourth, I don't remember. We complied. And at the time, the immediate thing that goes through your mind is, uh-oh, she's going to call our mother and say we didn't come straight home. We didn't recognize that it was racism at play. Didn't recognize because of how it played out. So long live Punch Train Park. Long live Punch Train Park. Long live Punch Train Park. Thank you. Pioneers of Punch Train Park. Brother Pori, how you doing? All right. I'm Joe Bowie, and I am delighted and privileged to be here for this auspicious occasion. I'm here wearing two hats, really. I'm here as your senator for Pontchartrain Park. I represent you in the, in, the, in the state legislature. And I'm also chairman of the Gentilly Development District. That's one of the sponsors of this event, but also one of the entities that have partnered with the Pontchartrain Park Neighborhood Association to help make some things happen for the park. This occasion, is one that truly is historic. First and foremost because of what you all have done in terms of your presence explaining who we are at a time when by law we were legally second class citizens. But Pontchartrain Park on these grounds really has three historic entities. One has been mentioned already, the Joe Bartholomew Golf Course one of the few African-American golf course designers in this nation is right here in Pontchartrain Park. We also have the only public historical black college and university, Southern University at New Orleans. So Pontchartrain Park truly, truly is a place where there's holy ground because you all not only ensured and demonstrated that your vision was what our struggle was about, but it also is an example of achieving in spite of what obstacles we had. So I'm just very happy to be here and I bring you greetings on behalf of Gentilly Development District and my colleague Matt Willard also has. Thank you, Senator Bowie. Ms. Gretchen, I remember, I think it was in 2020, we were talking about the historical, the historic designation and uh, I mean, I got to tell y'all, Miss Gretchen was so excited. Um, she was proud of all the work that the committee, that her and the Punch, Punch Train Park Neighborhood Association put together to make this historic day come to fruition. Uh, so back in 2020, I actually had this, worked with Senator Bowie to have this resolution passed in the legislature and uh, I kept, uh, you know, periodically I would ask Miss Gretchen, hey, I, I got this resolution, it's framed, it's kind of big, it's sitting in my house, you know, when can I give it at one of the neighborhood association meetings? And she would say, Matt, just calm down, calm down. I'm going to do a big event 
and and you could present it there. And obviously, we had to we had to wait uh, because of COVID, right? And and our families and our community were struggling with COVID. But I want to thank all of the elders, um, all of our seniors in the in attendance today for everything that you did in the the paths that you trailblazed for people like me to come up and and serve and be leaders in our community because without your history of service and your legacy in the New Orleans community, um, I would not be here. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for your dreams. Yeah. Um, because we know that all big ideas have to start with a dream. And not only do they have to start with a dream, but they have to come from someone who believes that they can achieve and make that dream come to reality. And so thank you for your dreams, thank you for your action, thank you for your leadership, and thank you for building this community in the historic Pontchartrain Park neighborhood uh, for all the generations in New Orleans to come after us. Uh, it's always a privilege and an honor to represent Pontchartrain Park um, in the Louisiana legislature. I do that proudly. Um, and so if I can ever be of service to y'all, please let me know. Uh, we have a lot of historic uh, places in Pontchartrain Park, like Senator Bowie just mentioned. And I want to say that uh, earlier this week, we celebrated another milestone in Pontchartrain Park when the Suno University celebrated the opening of a brand new nursing program. So we are continuing excellence in Pontchartrain Park. So let's keep that up and let's make sure that we provide those mentorship and those tutelage opportunities so that our younger generations can come behind and lead and continue blazing trails. Thank you. We have something we want to give you all based on what you all have done and I need you to repeat with me. I am. I am. Because Punch a Train Park is. Because Punch a Train Park is. We are. We are. Because Punch a Train Park is. Because Punch a Train Park is. Punch a Train Park yesterday. Punch a Train Park yesterday. Punch a Train Park today. Punch a Train Park today. And Punch a Train Park forever. Thank you, All right, Council Member. Eugene Green, also a former resident. Right on. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. It certainly dawns upon me that I am the last speaker before we unveil yes. the historic marker. So I'll cut my 15 minutes down to two. I am so pleased and honored to have an opportunity to be here representing the New Orleans City Council, and I'm going to say the city of New Orleans in the area in which I grew up. I grew up at the corner of, yes, that's good, that's good, right? <laughs> I grew up at the corner of Mendez and Pauline and spent a lot of time on Mendez Drive. Got my hair cut on Mendez by Mr. Drayton, right? Anybody know Mr. Drayton? Yes, he had a tremendous skill. He could afford a pair of clippers. That was important. I've also been a member of Bethany United Methodist Church for 61 years. 61 years. My parents were administrators at Southern University at New Orleans, my mother in the library for decades, and also my father, an administrator in charge of financial aid and student services at SUNO. My connections to the community continue. I was asked to join a board, and I'm certainly on enough boards of directors, but I was asked to join the board of an organization called Sustaining Our Urban Landscaping, or SOUL. And I said that if I was going to join yet another board, you all were going to have to do something for me. And that was agreed to plant one tree in front of every home in Pontchartrain Park. And as you know, those who have had an opportunity to have the trees um, in, in front of your community, it makes a big difference in how our community looks, but also it's going to affect heat, um, levels of heat in our community, and also um, a, a, a affect us in terms of positives relative to reducing flooding. So I'm just pleased to have an opportunity to be here on this evening. And I'll just say this. I am so pleased, my friends in Pontchartrain Park, to be the city councilman whose district includes Pontchartrain Park. My community. My community. And it's with somewhat bittersweet memories because I remember my father talking about the fact that he had served in the military eight years and came back and couldn't live north of Robert E. Lee because of the covenants, because of the segregation, because of the racism. But in some respects, as I look over all of these friends and family members that I see and celebrate with this great community, I recognize that 
sometimes there's a reason that certain things happen. And I'm just pleased that I had an opportunity to grow up here in Punta Train Park and Sugar Hill and other areas in this community. So I'm just pleased to make a brief presentation, um, which I will ask you all to bear with me for a second. I have one proclamation which says, whereas the city of New Orleans is renowned for its food festivals, famous citizens, and foreign visitors, and whereas the city council takes great pride in paying tribute to events and activities, now therefore be proclaimed by the city of New Orleans that the city council recognizes, and she doesn't know this, but you know who has been working so hard behind the scenes, yes. who lives in the same house now that she grew up in, and who has done so many things for this community. We are pleased to recognize Gretchen Bradford, the president of the Country Train Park Neighborhood Association. And Gretchen, this proclamation is in appreciation for your commitment to making the community in which you were raised and have made your home for life an even better place to live and grow with. Thank you for your service and motivation in and by the name of the New Orleans City Council. It's signed by all seven council members at my request. Thank you very much, Gretchen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have one more. It's just going to take one more second and then we're going to unveil. Whereas the city of New Orleans is renowned for its food festivals, famous citizens, and foreign visitors, and whereas the city council takes great pride in paying tribute to events and activities, now therefore be proclaimed by the city of New Orleans that we recognize the Puncher Train Park Neighborhood Association. And what an association it is. And I know we have a Pontilly Association and the like, but I want to recognize Puncher Train Park Neighborhood Association for the work that they did. I had an opportunity to accompany the members as we went to Baton Rouge to get the historic designation there. And it's for years of representing the residents of historic Puncher Train Park, working with success to enhance the quality of life for the residents of this historic and model community. Once again, it's an honor and privilege for me to be here on this evening for this historic occasion. And thank you all very much. And it is great to see friends and family. All right, I know we have to uh, rush because we have to do the unveiling because we got something special happening at 830. But I have to, I just have to let Preservation Resource, Miss Danielle Dessault, come and say a few words because they really helped us get to where we are. Hi everyone, I'll keep it short, I promise. Thank you, Gretchen. It's such an honor to be among such leadership tonight. When Gretchen and the Pontchartrain Park Neighborhood Association approached the PRC in 2018 and said, we want to be on the National Register for Historic Places, it was so obvious to us that that was a shoe in We had known for years the incredible history of this neighborhood. Um, we had leadership on our board, like Ms. Gaynell Lawrence, Ms. Leslie Bowie. We'd written stories about Pontchartrain Park and the incredible history behind this neighborhood. Not just the history, but the perseverance for people to come back and rebuild after devastation after Hurricane Katrina. It was an inspiring story. And then I learned that they had actually tried twice before to get on the National Register of Historic Places, and the National Park Service had said no. That blew our minds because the reasoning they said was after Katrina, not enough historic buildings were left, and so, you know, sorry, there's not enough historic significance. Mm. That is bull, is what we said. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just the historic buildings. Yes, historic buildings are so important. They're physical manifestations of our history and our culture. But you know what else? You know what else is important is the fireworks. fireworks. <laughs> Fourth of July, Fourth of July. <laughs> it's the people who live in those buildings, those historic buildings. It's the culture, it's the community that brings those buildings to life. Without the people, buildings are just shells. And Pontchartrain Park is such a beautiful manifestation of that. What a community this is. When we started talking to people to record the history, to take it to the National Park Service, when we started talking to the elders in the neighborhood, we were blown away. Let me tell you, we do this all day long. We get designations for historic sites and neighborhoods. Never had we seen a community of people who loved their neighborhood more than the residents of Pontchartrain Park. We were so inspired. I want to thank um, 
everyone who helped us along that, that road, we helped we had students from Tulane University and from UNO who came and surveyed the neighborhood for us. Um, again, Ms. Gaynell and Ms. Leslie really were integral in helping us make this possible. And also, I want to thank Randall and Brittany DuPlessis. They um, hosted us for an event um, as they were renovating their home. I'm so thrilled to say that Randall is now on our board, so we do have Pontchartrain Park recognition on our board. And just as a quick side note, I want to say it was a family affair. So my husband, Ramsey Green, was working for the Cantrell administration at the time and helped spearhead um, a process to get millions of gallons of rainwater um, held in the golf course so that this neighborhood wouldn't flood during major rain events. So we both fell in love with Pontchartrain Park at the same time, and we're thrilled for your success tonight. Congratulations. What an honor that you all are among the most nationally historic neighborhoods in the entire country. Congratulations. <laughs> Last but not least, Chase Bank. Ms. Holmes? Let's, a round of applause for Ms. Diana Holmes. Well, I'll definitely be brief, but this is extremely an exciting opportunity for J.P. Morgan Chase to be a part of unveiling this historic moment here in Pontchartrain Park. You know, we are committed to uplifting communities across the U.S., but especially right here in New Orleans. Just since 2019, we've given uh, philanthropic dollars of the number of about 17 million. So we love New Orleans just as much as you all. And I'm a New Orleans native. <laughs> so thank you for allowing us to be a part of this special moment here in Pontchartrain Park. And we appreciate you all and we look forward to uplifting the community even more. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh if you would turn to your left and gather, those who can gather, Gretchen wanted to make sure that she planned a program that you felt all 70 years of Punch and Train Park as we sat here this evening. And now we do feel it, but now here's the time for that special unveiling. Mr. Carey, Mike Carey will read the inscription. All right, uh, Pontchartrain Park Historic District. The legendary Pontchartrain Park neighborhood, founded in 1952, was home to many African-American political, social, and business leaders in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. From the middle of the 20th century through the late civil rights era on to the decade of the 1980s. Pontchartrain Park was one of the first African-American subdivisions of its kind, with modern homes and recreational amenities built in the South. The park was once considered the safe cradle for black hope and prosperity. Today, residents continue in the stride of faith, perseverance, and triumph engendered by the park's founding residents. May the legacy of those daring pioneers live on, placed on the National Register of Historic Places, June 23, 2020. Yeah. Long live Punch Train Park! Long live Punch Train Park!
Come on. 